first draft was actually a character entering a K-drama world. So like, with that first concept idea, I spoke to my lecturer and after a few discussions, we thought of like, how about going to something that was closer to my roots? So for the fictional world, we chose to do Bollywood. It's very unconventional in its genre that really attracts me to wanting to do a Bollywood film. Like, I like the idea of that. It's definitely the concept of Bollywood. <laughs> First, I envisioned the character of Amir to be a Shah Rukh Khan type. Anwar come in, the moment he started dancing, it's like all his charm, like all the charm of Amir came out. He broke out of the mold and he created what is an Anwar type. Like positive and happy towards everyone. He is the only person, right, that at 4 a.m. in the morning still can be dancing, singing, laughing and cheering. Uh, he's especially dedicated to the film. Uh, even when, like, let's say we had a slight script changes, then we had an additional fight scene, right? He just took it in stride. Lah. Even though the character Lee may have similar traits to what I might have as a person, but I feel Dorothy uh, took the character Lee and portrayed it in her own way. We loved her comedic timing, especially. She would actually come up with jokes on set that uh, we didn't think the lines would become jokes and end up, it's quite a collaborative, impromptu process. The moment Gurdjieff walked through the doors, we knew that that would be our Shanti. She stepped into the door, she radiated the energy of Shanti and like, that Shanti. During Subina's audition, we realised her, we noticed her sense of like regalness and she was very matriarchal. What she played, the matriarchal mum, that uh, very protective of son, it was really funny. It was, uh, Siva Kumar, uh, I was a big fan of him in A Yellow Bird. I think that he gave us a really, really funny performance and I think he's the glue that holds the Bollywood world and the real world together. I'm just really appreciative. They are, they are a bunch of very understanding people. They were very patient with us because they know that we are student film. But at the same time, they were really top-notch professionals. I'm very grateful to our cast. I really want to thank them for keeping that cheerful and positive energy on set. For Lisa's wardrobe, because she's a Chinese girl, I want to incorporate a bit of Chinese elements. For example, the blue outfit. The draping style for the shawl technically isn't something you actually see in Bollywood. For Shanti, she's the main female lead of the Bollywood film itself. She just had to look very elegant. For the choice of colours, purple was something that stood out from the set design. For the pink outfit at the fountain, called the Lehenga, every Bollywood movie, they change their outfit in different scenes. For Mother, she's kind of the villain. So to show the contrast that she's the evil kind of character, I had her wear black instead. Zoe, the production designer, came out with this fantastic idea that fairy lights are the linking factors. It creates contrast between the two worlds where the Bollywood world is colourful and big and bombastic and contrasts with the real world. There are some difficulties at conception to create the Bollywood world. Uh, not knowing the genre well enough. At the time, um, the group of nine, only about one or two are really Bollywood fanatics. It's a very stagey heavy film. We didn't realise that during pre-production. I didn't really have a clear understanding of Bollywood. Firstly would be the amount of logistics that had to be planned for this. Starting with songs, choreography, dancers, and all the extras that we need to have. Because I'm in charge of the wardrobe of each and every character, so it's hard for me to bring out their character and the style of Bollywood is definitely the songs. Because um, what is a Bollywood movie without Bollywood songs? I think one challenge would be I didn't have a lot of contacts, like people that I know when going into this. I uh, try to nail that perfect take where the motion is correct, the focus is correct. Masking is such a painful thing. Dates and times, I still have like tried to get things at the last minute, like transport and things like that. We could not use most of the lights that we actually use for the film but because I really do not know how to use them. I'm not used to overnight shoots. Once we found a composer, we realised that there was actually a lot more that we needed to do. For instance, find an arranger. Uh, process 
of the song composing and like song arranging. There was once where I forgot to bring one of a key wardrobe. Having to plan the schedule according to the dancers' availability. Like those dollies and those like easy ring and all that, right? It's generally slightly harder for me because of I, for one, I don't have as much upper body strength and two, it's physically taxing. Like, dancers also mainly speak Hindi. That, that caused the language barrier between us. Like it was a challenge to wrangle so many people at one time because like once you put them in position and everything, you turn your back and then like... I wasn't really confident with this role of sound recordings because like I wasn't very good at it. So like, Justin managed to help me get someone from outside who uh, mentored me and taught me a lot about sound recording. There was a bit of lighting issues, like during the rough when we saw and all that, and conti problems are uh, hence. But during the reshoot, one good thing was at least um, through like revisions of like lighting and camera shots, I end up the scene actually became better than what it originally was and closer to what we sort of like envisioned for it. And going to all the different neighborhoods to just like you know knock on doors, hopefully like like hoping that people would open their doors to us firstly and allow us to use their house for filming. We learn how to be more thick-skinned. Like even if you knock on a door and someone opens the door and they just make, like not even, not even say a word, just like a sound, and then they slam the door back in your face, you just smile and then walk on to the next door. <laughs> because we actually overrun quite a bit, then the next day shoot started at about 11, we ended about 6. So I couldn't really get enough rest before the next day shoot. So uh, like I resorted to actually sleeping in the equipment truck, which is not something that you should do actually. Shooting a freaking fight scene in 51 minutes where it's one take and go. For the first take, we had like the red cloth over the camp and then we were like, let's stand around the camp and then we were like, I actually thought you're supposed to do that every shoot day. I think by now, everyone in my in the whole team are an expert in untangling fair lights. We're on a house tracky and we get we like, okay, let's all move on to the next block and we see a mini mart. Everyone's like, okay, should we go? But like we're thinking like who's gonna be the first one to say let's go to the mini mart? <laughs> uh, we're running short of time. The baby oil was on my mag liner and the camera crew can't touch the baby oil. So, the <laughs> I didn't want to do this. Oh. Hi, Zoe. What are you doing? It's oh, let's flying, think. The flying oil on me. Oh, wow. It's about having fun. Lah. It's like, it, it's our last project and just taking advantage of this to like, uh, like express your creative. A bunch of people who never watch Bollywood film start to embrace the culture. If you want to do a film, do the best you can because the film lives forever on the silver screen. To always know what makes you happy because if you know what makes you happy and you found your happy pill, it really, really helps you to get through this freaking tough journey. Be prepared. Be prepared ment mentally, physically, even spiritually because like, you never know what can hit you. <laughs> Better audio mix. Cool. Cheese balls. Okay, so hold the sound. Everyone ready? And cut.